Hi friends, in our last session we have seen effect of machine tool compliance on a machining accuracy. In today's session we are going to study design procedure for a spindle of a lathe machine. That is how we can design spindle for a lathe machine. This is Fezan Kagbi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin design procedure for a spindle of a lathe machine now as you can see a figure which is going to represent a spindle that is a schematic diagram is shown and from a figure we can say that spindle represents a shaft with two conditions first a supported length of l okay between the bearings acted upon by the driving force p2 and second cantilever of length c acted upon by the external force p i okay so the portion this portion which is representing a small l will be inside the head stroke okay and it is supported by bearings okay bearings are going to provide support to the spindle shaft whereas the pose a uh, portion which is hanging outside a head stroke is going to uh, since it is fixed from one end and open at the another end so it will act as a cantilever beam okay cantilever we can say and its length would be how much so it would be c and a force which is acting at its end is p1 okay so remember this condition okay p2 is a force which is acting that is a driving force and p1 is a force at its end position that is of a cantilever okay now the spindle is basically designed for two conditions first is bending stiffness which requires that the maximum deflection of a spindle nose should not exceed a certain predefined value so with respect to that you can clearly see the equation for a displacement that is y max should be less than or equal to y in a bracket so it is representing a permissible value that is a predefined value so maximum displacement should always be less than the predefined value of displacement now the total displacement of a spindle nose consists of these points so first point represents a deflection y1 of a spindle axis due to bending forces p1 and p2 second deflection y2 of a spindle axis due to compliance of a spindle support we know compliance is inverse of stiffness so because of a compliance of a spindle supports deflection y2 can take place okay and when the spindle has a tapered hole in which a center or a cutting tool is mounted the total deflection of a center or a cutting tool consists of the two deflections that is deflection 1 and deflection 2 in above cases that is it is it will contain deflection y1 as well as y2 when a center or a cutting tool is mounted within a tapered hole of a spindle okay remember this second condition okay now the third deflection would be deflection y3 of the center or a cutting tool due to compliance of a tapered joint okay so three deflections y1 y2 and y3 that is the total deflections of a spindle nose okay now let's move further we are going to start with for deflection of a spindle axis due to bending okay in this design procedure the first case would be deflection of a spindle axis due to bending so for determining the deflection of a spindle nose due to bending we must first establish a proper design diagram in this context the following guidelines has to be employed for a successful design the first is if the spindle is supported on a single anti friction bearing at each end it may be represented as a simply supported beam which you can see in a diagram b okay it represents a simply supported beam okay now in second point if a spindle is supported in a sleeve bearing the supported journal is analyzed as a beam on a elastic foundation for purposes of a design diagram the sleeve bearing is replaced by a simple hinge support and a reactive moment m r acting at the middle of the sleeve bearing now what is a sleeve bearing and anti friction bearing you will study further just now remember the names anti friction bearing and sleeve bearing in a second the reactive moment is given as mr is equal to k into m where m is a bending moment at supports where k is a coefficient which varies from k is equal to 0 at small loads to k is equal to 0.3 to 0.3 now as you see in a first diagram is a representation of a spindle which we have seen in our previous slide 
second diagram b is a representation of a design diagram of a spindle and third diagram represents a deflected axis of a spindle okay deflected axis of a spindle by how much so by y1 displacement now consider for example the spindle shown schematically in the figure a by replacing the rear ball bearing by a hinge and a front sleeve bearing by a hinge and a reactive moment emma the spindle can be reduced to a design diagram that is 5.5b so you can see this b diagram okay now the deflection at a free end of a beam spindle nose can be determined by maclay's method and is found to be yi is equal to 1 upon 3ei in a bracket p1 c square in a bracket 1 plus c minus 0.5 p2 a into b into c in a bracket 1 minus a by l bracket close plus m r l c okay so let's say this is our equation 5.1 and we are going to directly use the result of that is maclay's method okay this is a displacement equation now e is a young's modulus that is modulus of rigidity of a spindle material and r is a moment of inertia so average moment of inertia of a spindle section okay now let's move further next we need to see deflection of a spindle axis due to compliance of a spindle support so let delta a and delta b represents the deflect uh, displacement of a rear and a front supports respectively owing to the compliance of a support the spindle deflects as shown in a diagram you can see it is depicted in a diagram now for a, for a design purpose we are then considering the most unfavorable case where the bearing displacements are oppositely directed now from a similar triangles you can see from a diagram OCC dash and OBB dash we are going to obtain y2 upon c plus x equals to delta b by x okay so there is a, def a, deflect a deflection delta b and a total displacement is y2 over here on a top side on upper side there is at a point a the displacement is delta a okay with uh, okay now where from this equation we can make y2 as a subject you can see equals to 1 plus p by x into delta b let's say this is our equation 5.9 again from a similar triangle o a a dash and obb dash we can obtain delta b by x equals to delta a upon 1 minus x where from this equation we can make x as a subject and we can obtain the value of x equals to l into delta b upon delta a plus delta b let's say this is our equation 5.20 now we need to substitute this value of x in our equation 5.19 so basically substituting equation 5.20 into equation 5.19 so we are going to get y2 so y2 is equal to delta b in a bracket 1 plus c by l bracket close plus delta a into c by l let's say this is our equation 5.21 now it is evident from this equation 5.21 that displacement delta b of the front pairing has a greater influence upon deflection y2 of a spindle nose that is displacement delta a of a rear bearing Displacement delta A and delta B can be determined from the expression delta A is equal to R A. So support reaction R A upon K A and delta B is equal to R B upon K B. Where R A and R A are the support reactions at position A and position B. Now K A and K B is a respective stiffness that is at point A and point B. So the reaction force we need to find out RA and RB from an equilibrium condition. So you can see I have considered first case moment of all the forces about point A. So with respect to A, moment of force will be equal to 0. Sigma MA is equal to 0. So from this, now we need to see the diagram. So from this diagram, you can see we need to consider a moment at point A is equal to 0. So with respect to that, the forces which would be acting is a support reaction at point A b right so what's going to become so you can write rb into l minus p to a plus mr minus pi in a bracket c plus l is equal to zero where from rb is equal to p to a minus mr plus p1 in a bracket l plus c upon l let's say this is our equation 5.21 now further we need to consider second case we need to take moment of all the forces about point b is equal to 0 that is uh, summation mb is equal to 0 so the equation become ra into l minus p2b minus mr plus p1c is equal to 
zero. Where from this equation, R A is equal to P two B plus M R minus P one C by L. Let's say this equation is five point twenty five. Keeping in mind equation from equation five point twenty two five point twenty five, the final expression for deflection Y two may be written as follows. So Y two is equal to P two A minus M R plus P one in a bracket L plus C upon L into K B in a bracket one plus C by L plus P two B. Plus M R minus P one C upon L into K A into X into C by L. Let's say this equation 5.26. So the total deflection of a spindle nose can be determined as a sum of Y one that is equation 5.18 and Y two that is equation 5.26. So we have found out that and total displacement would be uh, Y is equal to Y one plus Y two. So the resultant deflected axis of a spindle is shown in a figure you can clearly see 5.7 total deflection has been shown that is capital y y1 plus y2 now next we need to see optimum spacing between a spindle supports so an important parameter in a spindle design is the ratio lambda is equal to l by c the optimum value of this ratio is one that ensures minimum total deflection y it can be determined from the condition dy by d lambda is equal to Zero. The qualitative variation of y1, y2, and y1 plus y2 for a constant value of forces p1 and p2 can be obtained from this figure as a function of ratio L by C. The point of minimum of the y1 plus y2 curve gives the optimum value of ratio L by C, which is generally lying between three and five. So the value of Lambda optimum depends upon first ratio alpha is equal to KB by KA of stiffness of the front and a rear bearing, and second factor capital F is equal to KB by KC into L IC by I L, where KC is equal to three E IC upon C cube equals to bending stiffness of a cantilever. IC is the average moment of inertia of a spindle over the cantilever length, and I L I L is the average moment of inertia of a spindle over the supported Left. Okay, now moving further. So the variation of lambda optimum as a function of f can be obtained from Figure 5.9, where on x-axis it is for, there is a force representation, and on a y-axis there is a lambda representation. Now we need to consider the two cases of alpha. That is, alpha is equal to one and alpha is equal to ten. Now, when a spindle is mounted on an anti-friction bearings, an additional check is necessary to ensure that a constant lambda optimum is greater than or equal to lambda minimum, which is equal to 2.5, is not violated because for lambda less than 2.5, the bearing play plays a lead to considerable radius run out of the spindle nose. An opposite constraint or a maximum span. Stems from the requirement that for a normal functioning of a spindle driving gear, the stiffness of a span should not be less than 25 to 50 kg force per micro. So this constraint is expressed by using this equation. There is a relationship. L is less than or equal to d L raised to 4 by 3 upon k raised to 1 by 3. Let's say this is equation 5.27. Where DL is the average diameter of a supported length of a spindle, K is equal to 0.05 in case of a normal accuracy machine tool and 0.1 for in a case of a precision machine tool. Now, when a spindle is supported on a hydrostatic journal bearing, the maximum deflection at a middle of the span should satisfy the condition Y L max less than or equal to 10 raised to minus 4. And let's say this equation 5.20. The maximum span length L max should be limited by about constraint. So this constraint is based upon the requirement that a maximum misalignment due to deflection of a journal should should not exceed the one third value. Okay, guys. So in today's session, we are keeping up till here. In next session, we are going to start with the bearing topic that is sliding sliding bearing and sleeve bearing. So till then, stay tuned and thank you all. Thank you.